Fei Mu was a director whose life coincided with huge upheavals in the history of China. A man of deep intellect and a love of China, who would spearhead many innovations in Chinese cinema and endure untold difficulties, and die as a refugee at the age of 44. Denounced and forgotten after his death, his films were rediscovered in the 1980s and would go on to influence many generations of Chinese filmmakers. The best known of his films is Spring in a Small Town, which is often referred to as the greatest Chinese film of all time. Fei Mu was born on October 10, 1906 in Shanghai. Highly proficient in languages, he became fluent in English, French, German, Italian and Russian. He was also a voracious reader, so much so that his habit of reading late into the night led him to going blind in his left eye. After graduation, Fei Mu agreed to his family's wishes and began working a respectable job as an accountant for a mining company. However, in 1930, Fei Mu finally decided to follow his true passion and entered the film business. After some difficulties getting permission from his parents, Fei began working as chief editor for the information department of North China Film Company, and a couple of years later, he was offered a job with the Lianhua Film Company. At Lianhua, Fei first worked as an assistant to the pioneering director Hao Yao, who was the director of The Romance of the Western Chamber, and the author of China's first film theory book. After being mentored by Hao Yao, 27-year-old Fei Mu was ready to become a director himself. In 1933, his first film, Night in the City, had its premiere. The critics were astonished by the young director's talent and the film was a hit with audiences. Night in the City's lead was a legendary actress Ruan Lin Yu, who at the time was one of the biggest stars in China. Ruan would go on to star in Fei's follow-up films, Sea of Fragrant Snow and Life, before tragically ending her life in 1935 at the age of 24. Fei's next movie, Song of China from 1935, is his first to survive to the modern day. A story of several generations of a family and the expectations parents have for their children, the film, with its traditional family values, was a part of Chiang Kai-shek's anti-communist New Life movement, which tried to promote traditional Confucian social values. Blood on Wolf Mountain was released in 1936 and tells of a village terrorised by a pack of wolves. The film was made just before the start of China's war with Imperial Japan and is usually seen as a direct allegory of the conflict between the two countries. The film starred the famed actress Li 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 and Lang Ping, who would later be better known by the name Xiang Qing, the wife of Mao Zedong, and one of the infamous Gang of Four. The Second Sino-Japanese War was in full force in 1937, and in November of that year, Shanghai was occupied by the Japanese. During the year, Fei managed to direct four movies. Masters of the Northern Front, Gold Plated City and Murder in the Oratory all took the form of Chinese opera. Fei also took part in the anthology film Luanghua Symphony with his short film Nightmares in Spring Chamber. The four films were deeply nationalistic and were meant to fight against the Japanese hegemony, a common theme in the films of the time. After this, Fei and many of his compatriots fled the Japanese occupation to Hong Kong, where he met the producer Jing Jingming, with whom he had the idea to make a movie about the life of the legendary Chinese philosopher Confucius. Confucius was shot in Shanghai during the Orphan Island period of 1937 to 1941, during which the Chinese sections of Shanghai were occupied by the Japanese and with the international settlement and the French concession remaining free. The films of the period were made in these free zones at surprising numbers, with over 230 made during the five-year period. 1941 was another busy year for Fay. He collaborated with the Austrian director couple Louise and Jacob Fleck on the film Children of the World. This would be the first and only collaboration between Chinese and international filmmakers before the founding of the People's Republic of China. Later the same year, Fei made the Peking opera adaption Songs of the Ancient China and The Beauty, a love story set to the backdrop of Shanghai's theatre world. On December 8, 1941, Japan invaded the foreign concessions of Shanghai and took over the film industry. Many artists fled to Hong Kong, but Fei remained behind to care for his ailing mother. Not wanting to work with the Japanese, Fei changed his focus to working in the theatre 
and directed numerous plays, first for the Tiang Fang Theatre Company and later for the Shanghai Art Troupe, which he founded. It would take until 1948 for Fei to finally direct his next film. It would be a busy year, with him directing three films. Two of these, The Little Cow Herd and Remorse at Death, were once again Peking opera adaptions. Remorse at Death starred the legendary Peking opera artist Mei Lang Fang and would be China's first film shot in colour. The film's release was a disaster. The colours were washed out due to the cheap film used and, released in the middle of a raging civil war, the film received little notice. Fei Mu's third film of 1948 would become the main reason he is remembered today. Spring in a small town is set in the then present day and tells of a family living in the eponymous small town. The main couple, an ailing husband and her depressed wife, are living a loveless existence until a doctor, a former flame of the wife, comes to visit. For a moment there's a possibility of a new romance, but the film ends with the doctor leaving alone and the husband and the wife staying together. Spring in a small town was made rather quickly, in three months during the Chinese Civil War, with only five actors who were all relative newcomers to cinema. The minimalistic style of the film was partly due to necessity, because the film was made on the cheap, to offset the expenses of another, more ambitious production by the film studio. Fei told the film's writer he didn't really see the film as a love story, but as a movie about dejection. To Wei Wei, the female lead of the film, Fei gave the direction, inflamed emotions must be kept under control. During the shoot, Fei told the actors to forget the script and encourage naturalism. He told the actor Zhang Hongmei, who played the sister of the husband, to wear her own clothes in the film. For a scene of the sister's birthday party, the director had the actors have fun amongst themselves for the whole afternoon until shooting the scene in one shot. This all was because Fei wanted the film to feel lifelike, truthful and honest. The film was shot in Songjiang, a small town one hour away from Shanghai. Most of the film is set outside, among the rubble of the still recent war. When asked about his choice to shoot among the bomb-damaged ruins, Fei answered, Sometimes a cinematic frame can speak volumes. When the film was released, the audiences were lukewarm and the leftist critics called the film decadent and ideologically backward. The critics also attacked the film's narcotic effect, its refusal to attack the property owner class and its conservative ending. The film was quickly pulled out of distribution. When the People's Republic of China was founded in 1949, once again many of the artists moved to Hong Kong and Fei Mu, along with his family, was among them. Fei never wanted to completely settle down in Hong Kong and only planned to wait for the dust to settle in Shanghai enough for him to return. In 1950, the director tried to return to China. The trip ended in humiliation and Fei went back to Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, Fei began working on a new movie. Wei Wei had also arrived in Hong Kong, Lin Fei casting her in his upcoming film and mysteriously not telling her anything about the story, only for her to start learning unicycling and plate spinning. Unfortunately, Fei would never get to finish this film. On the morning of January 31st, 1951, he died of a heart attack at the age of 44. He died by his desk, where he was working on a future film script. The film he was working on with Wei Wei would be The Show Must Go On. It would be finished by Xu Xinlin and released in 1952. The film tells the story of an acrobatic troupe stranded in Hong Kong, struggling to make enough money to return to mainland China. In the following years, Fei's films would be mostly forgotten. Things began to change in the 1980s though. China's film archive was reopened after several decades, and a new print was made of Spring in a Small Town and it was finally re-released to a celebratory reception. In 2005, the Hong Kong Film Awards Association named Spring in a Small Town the greatest Chinese film of all time. When describing Confucius, Fei Mu called him a great educator, thinker and philosopher doomed to be the victim of the politics of his time. This description would also fit Fei, a man of brilliant artistry whose career was too often swept under the tides of history until finally emerging to international celebration, unfortunately too late for him to know of it.